Welcome to Art That Place and Praise. I'm Ginger. This video is a face-off between two notable brands of sketchbooks, Strathmore and Moleskin. And to test them both, I'll make two separate watercolor paintings instead of just one. I know there are lots of other sketchpad brands out there like Canson or Arteza. And within these brands, there are many sizes and paper types to choose from. It can get confusing. But today I'm comparing this moleskin art collection that's supposedly good for watercolor and this Trathmore mixed media journal with a tan colored paper. I've narrowed down my search to these two because they've gained great reviews and I've seen artists use these a lot. So I wanted to try them myself to check how well they perform. On first look, I like that Moleskin has an elastic. It's useful not just in closing the book, but it can serve as a page holder. So you can wrap the elastic around the page you're sketching on so it doesn't flap around, especially when you're working while traveling. The first thing I notice as well is that the Moleskin opens flat, but Strathmore doesn't. When I first opened the Strathmore, I felt some resistance on the pages. You, you kind of have to press the paper down with a little bit more force. So the gutter and spine can lay flat on the table. Now if you're used doing this, there's no need to worry about breaking the spine because the pages of this sketchbook are Smythe sewn and not just bound with glue, so they're pretty sturdy. The moleskin is stitched as well. The moleskin paper is quite coarse in texture, unlike Strathmore that's very smooth in both front and back pages. There's an accordion pocket on the back, which is good for postcards, tickets, souvenirs, photo references, and stuff you like to bring with you when you travel with a sketchbook. The leather-like cover is its not as thick as the Strathmore, so it's a bit bendy. But that's not much of a deal breaker anyway. At least it's sturdy enough to keep it propped up on your hand or lap if you're doing plein air painting on the go. So let me test out the mold skin first by painting an urban scene from uh, my visit in Malaysia. This scene was taken from one of our food trips in Hawker Place or a street food type of restaurant in Kuala Lumpur. I was so fascinated by the way the locals cook their noodles. They prepared the food so fast and the dish was absolutely delicious. So I want to capture that moment in this sketchbook. Now this moleskin I'm using has 135 pound cold pressed paper. That's why the texture is bumpy and rough. That 135 pound is equivalent to 200 GSM, which stands for uh, grams per square meter. That just means that the paper weighs 200 grams per square meter. That's not such a bad weight. It's not as flimsy as copy paper, but it's not that thick either compared to the 300 GSM of Strathmore. Now the ivory colored paper has 25% cotton fiber content which is excellent because then the paper can absorb water and inks very well. Cotton paper is of a more superior quality compared to paper made from wood pulp and good quality cotton fiber paper can last more than 100 years without discoloration and deterioration. Now just as a side note, wood pulp still constitutes the largest percentage in the production of paper. But in recent years, because of declining forest cover and contamination of the environment, there's been a move to support uh, the use of non-wood raw materials like cotton, bamboo, hemp, jute, corn stalks, flax, abaca, and even grass. So it's good to see that Moleskin is supporting this effort by adding cotton fibers in their paper. What else? Uh, this Moleskin paper is also acid-free, which helps preserve your artwork for years. Acid-free paper will not yellow or crumble over time, so it's suitable for archiving. Now, what are my personal thoughts about Moleskin? 
Although the manufacturer says his sketchbook is suitable for watercolor, but I find that with very little water, the paper already warps. Like I'm not doing heavy washes here. My paintbrush was only slightly dipped in water and yet the paper is curling. Let's check out the back. There's no bleed through in the ink, but that's to be expected because I only use a fine tip Pigma Micron and not alcohol markers. With just a little water though, do you see how the paper now has waves and ripples? Some people might get annoyed with that, but I think this is easy enough to flatten. Just keep the book closed for a day or two and that will straighten out somehow. Moleskin is a good pocket-sized pad that's handy enough for travel. I personally find it a, challenge, a bit of a challenge though because I'm used to uh, 4 foot canvases and 9 by 12 inch paper so the space here is pretty small for me. But admittedly, we all need creative challenges once in a while. I think a good way to hone my skills in composition is by forcing myself to work with various paper sizes in either portrait or landscape orientation. Now let's head over and talk about Strathmore, this mixed media sketch pad. This one belongs to Strathmore's 400 series and it's proudly made in the US. Strathmore products in the uh, 400 series are 100% made from recycled paper and contains 30% post-consumer waste. What is post-consumer waste? Anyway, oh, that's paper that was recycled from old newspapers, from magazines, paper packaging, and other similar stuff. That's one thing I love about Strathmore, in fact. Uh, it supports waste management and recycling efforts and contributes to saving the environment, which is pretty cool, right? You might wonder if using recycled paper will compromise the strength of the sketch pad, but the company says that they only choose post-consumer fiber that has the highest grade for cleanliness and that they nev never, never ever compromise the performance of their products. And I guess that's true because I've used different Strathmore products before for many years and I never had problems with any of them. Now, what I have here is tone tan, but the 400 series also has tone gray. In both types, Strathmore infused the paper with some craft and bark fibers. So if you look closely, I don't know if you can see it here in the video, but you'll notice some squiggly lines and texture on the paper. That's not to say that the, I'm not saying that the paper is rough. It just looks textured and visually interesting, but the surface itself is really smooth. And because it's smooth, you can use this art journal for not just watercolor. It's also good for colored pencils, pen and inks and charcoal and graphite markers, acrylic gel pens, and gouache, I guess. It's pretty versatile and that's what I like about it. This Strathmore art journal is slightly bigger as you saw it's compared to the moleskin. Uh, the dimensions are 8.5 inches by 5.5. Moleskin is 8 and 1 fourth inches by 5 inches. Yeah. I love that Strathmore has heavier gauge paper, it's 184 pounds or 300 GSM like I mentioned. So I can pretty much load it with heavy washes of watercolor and not worry about water warping the paper. Strathmore only has 48 pages compared to uh, what Moleskin has here, it's 72 pages. And by 48 it means there are 24 sheets of paper bound together. That also assumes you're going to paint on both back and front of the sheet, right? But as you've seen with the moleskin, the paper is so thin, not, not really so thin, but it's thin enough that it warps with very little wetness. So I don't think I can paint front and back of every sheet of moleskin. Given my preference, moleskin 72 pages wouldn't really go very far for me compared to Strathmore's. I, I love though that the paper is ivory because it makes my colors pop out more. The contrasts are sharp. 
but the tan paper of Strathmore on the other hand gives my painting a vintage feel which is also a pretty effect. On the Strathmore, the paint colors don't stand out so much but I like it, I like it very much. The painting takes on a more muted and soft look and it carries, uh, it still looks very vintage and it carries its own character. By the way, you might wonder what it is I painted here. This is not a robot. It's not a contraption of some sort. This is a back alley in Kuala Lumpur, which I found so interesting. This is the backside of a line of restaurants in a very hipster district in KL. That's why I painted here a lot of exhaust fans, aircon units, back doors, garbage bins, and graffiti. The graffiti there is really beautiful. Alright friends, I've pretty much shown you how both the Moleskin and Strathmore perform using the same Kuretaki Gansai Tambi water color. I leave you to decide which one is your preference, but if you ask me, I think I prefer Strathmore over Moleskin. I love Strathmore's size, it's heavyweight paper, the fact that the page didn't curl or warp even as I loaded it with water, and the fact that I can still use the back of the page because of its thickness and durability. So all of that, hands down, I like Strathmore. Uh, so everything about it works well for me. Some of you might think differently and might find Moleskin a better deal. Price-wise, it does come cheaper than Strathmore. In any case, you can let me know in the comments below what you think. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks now again for staying with me in this Art That Place and Praise episode. Ginger Mali here saying goodbye and catch you later.